What's up folks? My name is Justin Kana. Welcome back or a very warm first welcome if this is your first time stopping by. I'm going to try something new with this video. I've been reaching out to a ton of really awesome makers and there's also been a couple of brands that have reached out to me wanting me to talk about their knives. So I've got a bunch of them on hand and I want to do kind of a side-by-side -side breakdown of knives, chef knives specifically, from a bunch of different price points from $3 all the way up to like $330. And then at the end of it all, make it possible for you to possibly win a new piece piece of gear for yourself. Why I say this video is different is because I'm going to be making every single knife that I talk about in this series its own little mini video to help with Google's search function on YouTube. But first, a little bit about how I evaluate knives. To me, and this is my personal opinion, when you're making a purchase of a new knife, there's two really important things to consider. How does it look on paper and how does it feel when you use it? So that first category breaks down into handle, the steel, the profile, the edge, the artistic details that they'll add, and then of course the price. And that second category will break down into balance, weight, how does the form feel in your hand? Does it make you go faster or slower? Does it cause any discomfort? and how does it sharpen? You can hopefully see that that first category is essentially everything you would learn online or in a catalog about a knife. You could do all the research in the world about the steel alloy they use and the handle materials and the edge geometry, but that second category is that very human factor, that uh, je ne sais quoi about a knife that until I get my hands on it, I can't tell you exactly how it's gonna feel for me. And it's something you should also take into account with anybody else on the internet who does a knife review. It's one of the reasons I love buying knives in person so much as opposed to online because someone could tell me that this knife is the best knife on the planet but if after chopping parsley for a couple minutes my middle finger starts to cramp up yeah that. But regardless, I still feel like I can bring some value through a little bit of a breakdown, and I want you folks to get a shot at upgrading your setup. So here we go. This is the Mercer M23510 chef knife from their Renaissance line. It is an 8-inch chef knife with a pretty classic Western style handle. This is made from Delrin, which was actually made by the DuPont company as a metal substitute. So it's very sanitary gets that uh, NSF stamp of approval. It's also water resistant and heat resistant. These rivets attach the handle to the full tang as well. They're using a high carbon German X50 CRMO V15 alloy. The edge says taper ground, which on paper sounds super fancy, but I would just be very careful if you're gonna take this knife out of the box and use it and then be disappointed that after you sharpen it, the edge feels a little bit different because unless you have the same machines that they are using to get this taper ground edge on it, it's gonna feel a little bit different after you sharpen it for the first time. So just be aware of that. Speaking of sharpening, this edge goes all the way down to the length of the heel. So there's no none of that edgeless heel garbage. So you can sharpen the entire length of this blade. This currently retails at around $35, but I've got it linked up down below for the most up-to-date prices. The shape is nothing fancy. If I'm comparing it to something like the Victorinox, it's maybe just a few millimeters wider. The handle doesn't come all the way up onto the knife as well. So if, depending on the way that you hold it, that can be good or bad. As far as any artistic details on this knife, they've got the knife and holding rod logo there with their own branding on it. So that's about all you're gonna get. So my thoughts on this, this is a utilitarian knife. This is often frequently found in the culinary school student starter pack. Is the steel bad? No, can you get it sharp? Yes, but it's not gonna last as long as some other knives you can get. At that price point though, it's pretty good, but it's definitely not gonna be the sexiest knife in your kit. I have a friend that cooks with this knife, so I've used it before. It's relatively well balanced, but the handle's very thin, so I find that I have to choke up on the handle quite a lot, which isn't the most comfortable, especially for long cutting sessions. But again, I've used this knife before, so I'm not gonna unbox it so that if you do win it, you get the one that's fresh out of the box. If you're just starting off or need a spare knife, or you're wanting to get into something like a Henkel or a Wusthof at a discount, the Mercer Renaissance is a good choice. These are Dalstrong knives. This is one of those products that when I unboxed it on Twitch, you folks were very quick to make sure that you gave me your two cents on the product, which I sincerely appreciate. Definitely made me feel old because I haven't done a lot of research on these up and coming Chinese brands. And I had no idea that they were one, so popular and two, so controversial. And if you don't know about Dalstrong, it's one of those companies that's part of the new wave of Chinese manufacturers who is essentially taking everything that the man knows about knives, 
wrapping it all up into one product, throwing some really savvy marketing behind him, slashing the price to like head tilting levels, and then providing really insanely good customer support. And after doing some reading and research and interacting with a couple of the guys over at Dalstrong, I can see why they've had such insane success. But you wanna know, is the knife dope or no? First up, I've got their Gladiator series. I'm gonna keep this super short. Here's all the info for that knife. If you want it, go ahead and comment down below. I want the Gladiator and the first person to comment down low will get it. And that prologue may lead you to believe that I don't enjoy this knife and you'd be 100% correct in assuming that. It's got a stupid edgeless heel, the handle unnecessarily curves, which looks really sexy on paper, but when you're actually holding it, it's not comfortable at all. It's full tang, but the tang goes all the, like, look how much metal is on the other end of this knife. The balance is just not good. The only thing that's good about this knife is the cover, and that is a Saya that doesn't have any pins in it. It just slides in and it clips right on. It works great. The Saya is great, the knife sucks. All right, moving on. Next up is their Shogun series. I've got their Series X chef knife here, as well as the Kiritsuke from the Shogun series. I wanted to compare these two side by side. The Shogun is arguably the most popular series in their line because it's Damascus. Everybody loves Damascus. This is a 66 layer high carbon stainless steel, which if you can see by the differences in the Damascus, the Kiritsuke looks like it's almost etched on, whereas this looks like an actual Damascus. But when I read reached out and asked it about being a fake, a rep said, to confirm the steel used in our cutting core is this kind of steel with all these kind of breakdowns. And they do say that this steel has a 62 plus Rockwell hardness. So it is apparently very, very hard. The only difference other than the profile of these is that the Series X is actually hammered, which is designed to make sure that food doesn't stick when you're cutting through it. It doesn't stick to the blade, which worked pretty well in my opinion, but that's not to say that the Kiritsuke did have problems with food sticking to it, so only get it if it's something that you're into. I actually found that the hammered finish was kind of harder to keep clean because the hammered spots are actually really, really deep. So instead of that traditional one swipe through the towel that you'll normally do to clean your knife, I had to like rub it down to actually get the knife clean between use. Moving on to the handle, this is a G10 fiberglass. It almost looks like carbon fiber when you take a look at it and it does have this really beautiful copper and brass decorative pin in the center. All of the sayas that come with the Shogun series are traditional plastic style sayas with a pin and a string attached. So that's a nice touch. The angle that they're giving you right out of the box is a eight to 12 degree angle from what they're saying. Now for my thoughts and my review on the the Shogun series and Dalstrong knives in general, and feel free to take this with as many grains of salt as you need. I find that when I bring up the word Dalstrong, people fall into one of three camps. There's the diehard haters, overpriced Chinese company, Japanese wannabes, poor quality materials, no craftsmanship, and then there's the home cooks who are just stoked AF that you can get a knife that looks like this and performs the way that it does and is made with these kinds of materials at a cost that is two to four times cheaper than what they're used to when they've done their research on another company like Ashun. And then there's that third camp of people who walk in super skeptical, get their hands on a Dalstrong knife and walk away pleasantly surprised. And I have to say that I'm finding myself falling into that third category. Of course, I'm gonna rip this apart if it's a bad product and it doesn't perform and it doesn't feel good, but that's not the case. Am I gonna drop everything that I own and get their full suite of products? No, it's not that good. And I know I said that I was pleasantly surprised, but I am gonna tell you about a couple of my gripes with these knives. The edge out of the box was pretty raggedy. It wasn't polished in any way, shape or form, which meant that after cutting with it for a couple of uses, I got these tiny microchips in the edge of the knife. And when it came to sharpening, because the steel is so hard, it actually took a couple of uh, extra passes to make sure that that edge got reshaped and then it was nice and clean. And then once I got it on a stone, I figured out that the edge was actually bent. I first discovered it when I went to go sharpen the Kiritsuke, but then I also found it on the chef knife. If you go ahead and look down the heel of the knife, if you do one of these moves, I could show you like this. This is a good way to see that your edge is straight. But this edge, and the edge of the chef knife as well, 
has kind of an S curve to it. It goes, there's like a bow in the edge in one way. So when you go to sharpen it, you're gonna get these micro scratches along the edge because you keep your angle straight, but the uh, shape of the edge is not straight. And all of this stuff, all these gripes that I have don't matter to the home cook because 94% of them aren't gonna sharpen their own knives. They're gonna take it to someone who's just gonna throw it on a grinder and they're gonna get the same edge that they got out of the box that was a little bit raggedy. And it's not to say I wasn't able to get the edge sharp. I was able to get it pretty sharp and it's holding up pretty well. But I do wanna be fully transparent and I do wanna be upfront about these problems that I had. I'd rather test it for you rather than have you drop your money and then be disappointed. Another disclaimer and one of the reasons that makes me choose the chef knife over the Kiritsuke is just the way that I work and the way that I use these knives. The heel and the knuckle clearance on the Series X chef knife is much larger. It allows for that rocking motion when you're chopping things. The Kiritsuke, it's very, it's much thinner here. So if you do do a pinch grip, you're not gonna get the knuckle clearance that you want. And you're not supposed to cut like that anyways. It's supposed to be kind of a push cut motion because the way that the edge is shaped and the way that the tip is shaped, if you do that, the tip is gonna dig into your cutting board and that's not good. That being said, tip work is much more enjoyable with the Kiritsuke knife. Pro tip for all of this, if you wanna beat the Chinese at their own game, go ahead and head over to aliexpress.com. That's essentially the Chinese Amazon. Go ahead and type in Damascus chef knife and you're gonna be able to find all of Dell Strong's competition where they aren't marketing to people in the US as much. Lowest price I was able to find was just shy of $47 and it's essentially the same product. What Dell Strong does really well is their marketing. Reading through their description on Amazon, I was ready to buy a whole set. But when it comes to actually using them, there's a little bit left to be desired. If you want a Damascus knife in your kit, the Shogun Series X is a good place to start. And if you're wanting to get a nice Kiritsuke and wanna try that push cutting motion, see if it's nice enough for you, I'm not gonna tell you not to get these knives, I just don't think they're gonna satisfy your knife needs forever. This is the Victorinox Fibrox Pro 8 inch chef knife. I'm gonna keep this one short and sweet. I've already done a full review and breakdown of this knife, but they sent me another one. So I wanna make sure that you get a chance to get one of your own if you want it. If you're interested in a budget-friendly beater knife that's gonna be able to drudge through all of those prep projects that you don't want your more expensive or thinner chef knife to handle, it's definitely a really, really good choice. Or if you're a home cook with really big hands that wants a knife that's going to hold the edge for a relatively long time and also be easy enough to sharpen on a whetstone if you want to do that yourself, I highly recommend this. There's also a ton of other really positive reviews on the interwebs about this knife, so it's kind of a no-brainer. This one is interesting. This is the Achilles from a company called Sternsteiger out of Germany. They raised a ton of money on Kickstarter for this knife and they were nice enough to send me one of their chef knives. They're known for their scissors and their more traditional German style Western knives, but they really went for a unique unibody design on this. They won a bunch of awards for the design on this. There is the gaping hole in the center of the knife, which I can only assume is to help with the balance. But even with that big chunk of steel missing, you can see how far back on the handle I have to go to get that balance point. So yes, it is still a very handle heavy knife, but it does feel balanced. Overall, it is one of the more interesting profiles I've seen. I'm used to the very straight spine and then very curved belly shape, but this seems to taper from both ends all the way to the tip. It's also incredibly sharp out of the box, which I'm not the biggest fan of highlighting in a knife review because I think it's kind of redundant to stay, say. I think the people that enjoy hearing that it's sharp out of the box are the ones that don't sharpen the knives themselves. This knife has a 59 to 60 Rockwell hardness rating, which is more than enough for most people. Going back to the handle, it's flat on one side and has these grooves on the other side where it almost encourages you to grip it this way which if you can see how I'm gripping it, is not the traditional pinch grip. I mean, if you're a home cook cutting two tomatoes with your knife, this is gonna feel fine. But if you're doing a whole entire case of onions, I'm gonna wanna choke up on this knife much more, which you can see, my fingers still kind of fall into those grooves, but it's, then I have this awkward gaping hole in the middle. What is that for? What I do like when you choke up on this knife is you get this really flat heel base so you can get that leverage with more dense vegetables. Overall, if you're into unibody style chef knives, the steel is definitely good enough to hold up to the professional workload, but you gotta make sure that this feels good in your hands. If you just want a piece of super minimal chef gear to go along with your kitchen, it's totally worth it. The price right now is of course varying depending on if you get into their Kickstarter or not, but links to the Achilles are down low in the description. So let's say you're on a budget, and I mean like super on a budget, and you have zero interest in getting your knives freshly resharpened, and you also happen to hate the environment. This 
is a $3 chef knife. Yep, this is brandless. They make products without any fancy logos or any other fancy branding. It just comes as it is. And all of their products cost just $3. Bucks. So in theory, instead of paying 10 to 20 to maybe even $30 to get your chef knife sharpened, you can just buy a new one. And on paper, this knife is kind of insane for the price of just $3. It's got a full tang, non-slip grip handle with rivets all the way through. It's got almost a Santoku style profile, a hollow ground edge, and it's just stainless steel made in China, which checks very similar boxes to some of the other knives that we've covered in these videos. A feature of this knife that I didn't think I was gonna enjoy as much as I did was actually the handle. It's got this really satisfying mix of the round profile of like a Japanese knife, but then it tapers down once you get towards the spine of the blade, where if you're gonna do that pinch grip, it just feels really good to hold this knife. It's also just a little bit longer than some of the other knives that we've covered in this series. And if you like longer handles, don't sleep on the brandless chef knife. Another question you might be asking, yeah, okay, but how sharp is it? I took this all the way up to 6,000 just for kicks and yeah, it gets pretty sharp. But don't expect this to last forever. Yes, the steel is very soft, which can be good and bad. This is the one that I just took out of the box. It's got kind of this very annoying little tiny half centimeter of heel that doesn't have a blade on it. Because the steel is so soft, I was actually able to take this one and grind it down. So it does have an edge now on the very heel of this knife and it's pretty sharp. If you're a casual cook that wants a couple of spare chef knives in different kitchens in your life, I think brandless is great, especially if you know how to put an edge on it. If you're a professional chef, then you sharpen your knives either every other day or once a week. This can be a fantastic beater knife for you to have where you just kind of run it up and down a stone a couple of times a month and it's gonna stay pretty sharp for you for the jobs that you're gonna use it for. And it's also gonna cost you about 10 times less than something like the Victorinox. This is the Suisen Honyaki Wa Kyoto. At $389.50, it is the most expensive knife that I'm gonna cover in this series, but you get what you pay for. This is 100% a fusion style project. It is tempered Swedish steel on the blade, very, very thin profile, and then coupled with a Japanese style handle of magnolia wood and water buffalo horn. Comes out of the box with a 90-10 bevel ratio, which if you're kind of on the fence about going full carbon or full Japanese with a single bevel, this is a really good middle ground because they've essentially taken the thinnest elements of a Western style knife and a Japanese style knife and fuse them into this bad boy, which makes it incredibly light. I couldn't even believe it when I picked this knife up the first time and I knew I had to purchase it right away, which is weird for me because I normally like knives with a little bit more weight to them. But if you do a lot of vegetable prep, delicate vegetable work, this knife is amazing. It's got a 60 HRC rating and the edge holds up really, really, really well. I'm very, very happy using this knife. At $389, it does come with a matching Magnolia Wood Saya, which I hope it would at that price point. I ditched it for a leather magnetic town cutler scabbard, which I've been using for years. Overall, with the materials, the shape, the profile, the price as well, this is definitely geared more towards the professional. I'm actually thinking about shipping this knife out to Isaiah Schrader and having him knock off this handle and put a custom one on it just for me. Leave a like on this video if you'd like to see a custom knife project like that on the channel. I just love this knife. I've had it for years and I kind of want to do something to breathe new life into it and I just think that'd be really really fun and unique. Because of that and it's also kind of tattered and beat up itself. I'm not going to be giving this knife away, so I apologize in advance for that. That'll do it for this Chef Knife Bonanza video. I want to continue to do videos in this style where I take a bunch of products in a certain category at varying price points and compare them head to head from either brands that I'm already using or brands that want to work together, and then you guys get a chance to win some free gear. If you're ever scrolling through Instagram and see a maker or a product that you want to see me cover, don't hesitate to reach out. There's been a couple of times when you folks have been kind enough to send a direct message to that company and say that they, you want me to review their product and they've reached out and sent me stuff. So thank you so much for helping. Every single knife that I covered is gonna be published as its own separate individual video. So if one knife spoke to you, I encourage you to head over to that video and follow the instructions there for a chance to win. If you love chef gear as much as I do, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can check back in. I publish new videos every single week on this channel. Thank you so much for your attention. My name is Justin Kana. Have a good one.